From WFSB, this is an Eyewitness News update. Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us on this Wednesday morning. It's March 6th. I'm Roger Suzanne. Let's take a, lot, a look at some of your top stories this morning. The state just released new video of the moments before an officer involved shooting in Bolton. Investigators say they were initially called out to the scene for a report of a man who was having a mental health crisis. Now, in that video, Trooper Brian Contenta tries to calm that man down, but the man refuses to drop the knife that he was holding. He does lift his hand, and that is when one trooper deploys his taser, and Trooper Contenta shoots his gun. Maxwell, please, buddy, drop it. You know me. You Maxwell, know. please drop it. You know me, buddy. I know one of you. Okay. You know me, buddy. Come on. You know me. Come on, buddy. You know me. Please. You know me. Dad, Dad. Come on, buddy. Please stay out of this death. Please stay out of the suspect is now receiving treatment at Hartford Hospital. An effort to ban the sale of energy drinks to kids in Connecticut continues to gain traction at the state capitol. Some lawmakers want to prohibit selling those drinks to anybody under the age of 16. In order to get the bill passed soon, though, it must be considered by both the House and Senate before May 7th. Nine people are sitting in jail this morning after a noise complaint in Clinton cracked a kidnapping case wide open. Here's a look at some of the booking photos that have been released by police. We know most of the people who were arrested are from New York, although one man is from Stanford. Police rushed out to the Clinton outlets initially, responding to a noise complaint around 10 o'clock Monday night. When they arrived, they discovered seven men and three juveniles. One man told police he had been kidnapped from New Rochelle, New York. One of the suspects allegedly told investigators that the victim stole both money and drugs from him. We're told officers also found narcotics, ski masks, and a gun at that scene. And turning now to campaign 2024, after Super Tuesday, the race for the White House seems even more likely to be a rematch of Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. Former President Trump nearly swept all 16 states and territories last night, but Nikki Haley was able to clinch one lone victory in Vermont, although we have learned she plans to bow out of the race later today. Trump secured nearly 900 of the 1,215 delegates he needs to officially secure that nomination. Again, Nikki Haley, who was bowing out of the race, did not have a strong showing, collecting just 66 delegates. And as a result, sources familiar with the former South Carolina governor's campaign again say she should and will likely get out of the race at some point today. President Joe Biden, without any serious challengers, has already gathered nearly 1,300 delegates on the Democratic side. The trial continues in Milford this morning for a state trooper accused of manslaughter after he shot and killed a man following a high-speed chase. Trooper Brian North faces charges in the death of Mubarak Suleiman in 2020. Today, or yesterday I should say, a Lyft driver who Suleiman carjacked before that chase took the stand. He says Suleiman attacked him and then stole his vehicle. He said to me, give me the phone. And I said, I'm not going to give him my phone. And then he, he slapped me. Right across my head. A Suleiman eventually crashed in West Haven. He was later boxed in by police and eventually shot by North seven times. Now, North says he feared for his safety at the time because Suleiman had a knife, but prosecutors insist he was not in any real danger. And some sad news in New Haven as two popular businesses are getting ready to close their doors permanently. The Sam Ash store on Amity Road is shutting down after decades in business. The signs outside the iconic music store promote a closing sale. Now, Sam Ash, they sell everything from guitars to orchestra instruments. And also, a well-known cocktail lounge in New Haven on Crown Street is also saying goodbye. The owner of 116 Crown announced the closure on Facebook, thanking the community for their support over the past 17 years. And at this point, more than three decades have passed since the Americans with Disabilities Act was signed into law. But activists say they are still fighting for equality, specifically at big health care systems across the state. Advocates say people with disabilities are routinely denied access to routine medical care. Now, this all comes as examination rooms are sometimes not equipped with accessible scales to be weighed on, exam tables of accessible height, and more. 
For five years, activists have been trying to get a new law to hold big health care systems accountable on the books for accessible diagnostic equipment. This morning, the fight continues. A public hearing is scheduled to take place at 11 a.m. And now on to the capital city where the Bone and Joint Institute at Hartford Hospital has just been named one of the country's best hospitals for orthopedics. The Women's Choice Award listed it in the top 7% in the entire country for its patient safety record and high recommendation ratings. Scott? 7.05 is now the time. We've issued a first alert for this afternoon through tomorrow morning for excessively heavy rain, one to two inches possible, maybe even locally more, and that's going to impact the traveling, especially for this evening's commute. Plan accordingly. It's going to be raining and it's going to be really raining tonight after the commute. It's really going to come down. So port drainage and river flooding is uh, they're both on the table. There is a flood watch for everybody with the exception of Litchfield County. Uh, it's going to rain in Litchfield County too, so it's all semantics. First alert live radar scans the state dry. Visibility is poor this morning. Two and three quarters of a mile in Tallinn, one and a quarter at Bradley, three in Brainerd, four in Willimantic, goose eggs in Waterbury at Oxford Airport. That's not good. Also, goose eggs in Chester not good. So we've got fog out there in parts of the state and a big storm system is racing in our direction. You can see it to our south. There's a cold front that's joining forces with this area of low pressure and it's just going to sweep right on into Connecticut this afternoon through tonight and into early tomorrow morning. The heaviest rain will fall tonight. Uh, we're expecting one to two inches out of this particular storm system. After yesterday's rain, we don't need any more rain, and we're going to get an additional one to two plus inches. Then we get a little bit of a break Thursday and Friday, and then more rain rolls in fr uh, Saturday night through Sunday morning. This is cumulative. So from now until Sunday at 5 p.m., we're talking about two to four plus inches of rain in the state. Just unbelievable. That's a month's worth of rain in about four to five days. All right, New Haven, good morning to you. 48 degrees, mostly overcast conditions. Not a bad start out there. The roads are a little damp, and there again, there is some fog out there, so please be careful. Not the best start in Hartford. 45, though, amazing degrees. You don't have to worry about ice or snow. Not for the foreseeable future. Excessive rain outlook, though. We are at level two. You'll notice the yellows across the state, with the exception of northern Litchfield County. That's probably why the flood watch has not been issued for that county. Temperatures out there this morning in the mid to upper 40s. Mid 40s, very popular number, 45 in Hartford, Meriden, Chester, Norwich, Bridgeport. So 45 is a popular number this morning, which is 20 degrees above average. And the temperature differential from yesterday, we're up 2 to 3 to 4 degrees, and there is very little wind. Let's take a look at First Alert Futurecast. It's tomorrow's weather today. Shows us mostly cloudy skies during the day today. The fog will lift, and then unfortunately, by 2 p.m., along 95, the 95 corridor, we're expecting that rain to roll in. This is a 5 o'clock snapshot. Rain, 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 rain for the evening commute and then really moderate to heavy rain at 8 o'clock tonight through about midnight tonight and then by about 4 a.m. it starts to shut down and tomorrow won't be a perfect day, but it will be a better day than today. Forecasted highs today in the mid to upper 50s. 45 is where we should be. That's the normal high. That's the temperature we've got out there right now. 50, maybe even 60 degrees at Brainerd a little bit later on this afternoon. But it's going to be raining heavily for the evening commute tonight and into very early tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, a little bit cooler, showery with windy conditions. Very windy. Breezy on Friday, but a delightful day. And then we're hoping to get the parades in. Looks like rain at night and rain Sunday morning. And that'll bookend the parade, so keep your fingers crossed, and the luck of the Irish, we hope, will be with us. That's a check of your first alert forecast. Roger, we'll send it back to you. All right, thanks, Scott, so much. And thank you so much for tuning in to Eyewitness News. Remember, you can always get news, weather, and traffic updates anytime on the WFSB News app. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. We'll see you soon.